I'm Nick Buttersley, the uh, project coordinator, so it's my job to liaise between uh, the various teams working on the Remaking Beamish project. And what we're doing here is uh, the main civil and infrastructure package uh, to deliver the 1950s town. Uh, we're in about week five of the construction works here, and you can see the progress is really quite uh, incredible. Uh, this was a very overgrown field. Uh, they've changed the levels of the site, flattened it off, and started to introduce the road areas, uh, the areas for us to, to build on. The, the two stoned areas here are the, the 1950s uh, cinema at the far end there, and the terrace, a sort of Victorian terrace. So as visitors look over from the town, they'll see the back of this sort of red brick Victorian terrace. It won't look out of place, uh, but as they come around the corner into the front street here, the road in the middle, uh, they'll see the shop fronts and the vehicles of a 1950s town. And so these are a couple of the first buildings that we'll be starting work on. But the very first one on this site will be the community centre over on the eastern side of the site. Um, we hope to start that before the end of this year. And one of the next things we'll be doing is actually breaking through the bund here to create another access point for that site. Uh, so that'll be you know, another big change in the, in the visitor interface to the site here. And the work you can see going on in the corner here is uh, to get services under the, uh, under the road and the tram lines. In particular, the services we're talking about here are foul drainage, um, which will go into the, uh, the treatment plant on the other side of the town there. It's a slightly noisy process as they just shave the concrete uh, sort of around the, uh, the trench there. But the actual process of boring under the, uh, the tracks is obviously quite quiet, really, it's, uh, in comparison. And it's a very good way of avoiding disruption to the site. It means that we don't have to close the tram or anything like that to get the, uh, get the piping under the road there. Uh, I suppose when, when we were doing the very early stages of planning, we were thinking in terms of, yeah, you've got to run a cable to the house to get power in, or you've got to take the drainage somewhere. And actually having the infrastructure to do a whole town is obviously quite a, quite a significant amount of work, quite a significant investment. Um, it's about six months of work, so that is you know, a fairly, fairly decent sized uh, chunk of the programme. <coughs> and, uh, and it covers more areas of the site than we originally imagined. So rather than just being isolated to the 1950s town or the 1820s area, it extends because we have to run drainage and roads around the, uh, around the site as well. So we've got a road coming in across the field to the centre of the site to allow us to bring uh, construction traffic into the site without having to share it with the visitor routes. That's very important, it's part of our safety plan, but it's also a another way of minimising the disruption to visitors on the site. And this, uh, this hoarding around the edge of the site helps control the noise, control the visual disturbance. There's obviously going to be a bit of noise, um, but for such a big construction, I think the, the impact on the site has been really very minimal. And actually visitors seem to enjoy it. They love seeing the works going on. They're really excited about the project. And so for people to see these things going on, they, they do understand it's, it's necessary. And, and we've not really had any, any issues so far. The, the terrace is uh, going to be home to our new catering outlet here in the 50s town, which is a fish and chip shop and John's Cafe from Wingate. Uh, those two are at the end here. Uh, Norman Cornish's house, uh, where we'll tell the story of the Spennymoor settlement and we'll show uh, Norman Cornish's early workshop. And the uh, shop that we collected from Middlesbrough, uh, which uh, <coughs> is right at the end here, and we're looking at the moment at that being a sort of toy shop and, and maybe a few other bits as well. Um, so this is a collection of different buildings. They're actually all from different places and slightly different architectural styles. But that's not unusual to see in towns where buildings have been demolished and then added along the edges. <coughs> so we've come a bit further into the site here. Uh, this is the uh, western side of the site. Uh, one of the things we're doing here is building in the access roads. Ultimately, the road here will be for the aged miners' homes, where we need to bring in groups by minibus um, so we, we need a separate parking area and separate access route, route for them. We're creating a kind of one-way route around the site so you can see vehicles at the moment having to come both ways along this track and that's obviously less convenient for them and by creating a one-way route that loops through the whole site uh, we can control the vehicle access much better and some of those roads will be kept, some will actually be taken out and, and buildings will go onto those sites so this road 
uh, ultimately is a cul-de-sac road where we have the semi-detached houses, the police houses and the airy houses here and this will just stop at the end of the road there and we'll maybe have parked cars or, and pedestrian access for people. And this area uh, is, is one of the areas that's most unrecognisable from how it used to be. This was very overgrown, uh, a few trees that we've had to take out here, uh, but we'll probably plant up again uh, when the works are finished. So this is one of the parts of the site that's changed hugely. We didn't have a road through here, the Bund carried on and we've cut straight through that to, uh, to bring a road in that we'll need for the access to the back of the age minor zones. And as you can see, it's an important access road for the construction as well. Uh, so this, this is where we're really seeing progress. This looked like a huge job on paper and, and we've chewed through this bund in, in days really. Uh, <coughs> just let this truck come past. And you can just see over into the distance where we're, uh, we're moving some of the stone that's ready for Spainsfield Farm to be reconstructed. We're hoping to start that early in the new year. And that's where the construction road and the drainage are coming through. So we just need to relocate the stone to allow the works to, uh, to proceed through the field there. This is the other side of the, um, the access road that we've cut through. Uh, so this helps us connect the centre of the site a bit more and ultimately the trolleybus route will come along the road here and rejoin onto the tram line uh, back here, which is the existing route. And the access road through Spainsfield comes across the middle of the site here and joins into the back here. So it's really opening up the middle of the site and visitors will be able to get into the, uh, the middle of the site to, to Spainsfield Farm and to cross in, in different ways than they have before. And you can see again these, uh, these bags of stone, the stone that we recovered from Spainsfield, uh, ready for us to start rebuilding the farm in a few months. So the access road that we've been talking about from, uh, from our main entrance into the site uh, comes across the field here. So it's, it's quite visible from the, uh, the pit village where we are at the moment. Uh, but as we finish the works, we're going to embank slightly uh, on this side of the road. So it'll disappear into the field really, just to minimise the sort of amount you can see from here. And Spainsfield Farm is going to be built about where the digger is at the moment. Uh, we're just looking at the l precise location of that to make sure we get the angle of the field behind it. Uh, Spainsfield, where it was uh, placed up in Weirdale, was on quite a steep slope and we want to recreate that as accurately as possible. There's also a drainage route that comes across here, all the exciting things that we have to, uh, to work on through the building uh, programme. So that's what these guys are doing at the moment and this should be finished in the next few weeks and that gives us a safe access route into the site. Uh, to avoid us having to share construction traffic with uh, visitor traffic and, and Beamish's own vehicles. So we're down in the Georgian area now uh, and this is enabling works for the coaching in site uh, that we hope to start about the springtime in the new year. So the footing here is going to be where we start the foundation works uh, for the main range of the coaching inn and then the ancillary buildings further over where the site cabins are now. Uh, there's a bit of work to do at the back here so the coaching inn sits back against uh, the, uh, the retaining wall that will be built here uh, to hold the, hold the fence up back here and that minimises the sort of sloping that we have to do here so we can keep the, keep the land here. And this muddy area in the middle will eventually be the courtyard, so this is where the coaches would have come in and turned around, and that'll be a, a nice area for visitors to sit and just enjoy, uh, enjoy their time at Beamish here. So the, the main buildings of the coaching inn, uh, the, the gravel footing here is slightly wider than the inn itself, but you can see the overall shape of the main range. Uh, the front corner here uh, is the bit of the building that we have photographs uh, and the original plan uh, of, uh, of the three tons from Scotch Corner. The tap rooms downstairs where visitors will be able to have a drink, a little bit of food perhaps. And then this area at the back will be the main dining room. So this is where we'll serve Georgian food or adapted Georgian food. Some of it wouldn't be quite suited to a modern taste uh, or hygiene standards necessarily. And then the sort of kitchen areas for our food preparation and the accommodation upstairs and in some of the agricultural cottages uh, along to the end where the dumper trucks are at the moment. And then there are other buildings on the side of the site here, so the ostler's room, uh, the um, stables, and so all the things you'd expect to see in a large functioning coaching inn will be representing on the site here. And visitors will be able to stay on site for the first time here at Beamish, uh, and we hope that will be a very popular attraction for visitors coming to Beamish. 
So we're expanding the Georgian area of the site, uh, which we've, we've started with the church, with the Hearst House here. And Joe the Quilter's Cottage is the first of the buildings that we'll complete as part of the remaking Beamish uh, project. We're well underway with the stonework, with the bricks for the, um, the fireplace, and we're hoping to open that in the springtime, uh, subject to the weather, with lime mortar and the sort of construction we're doing here. It is very sensitive to the weather. We've been lucky so far uh, since we started, uh, but there's always the possibility of a bit of rain holding us up, or the cold weather, uh, which stops the lime mortar setting. And then with the coaching in, uh, really this whole landscape will transform in terms of what we can offer visitors. And I think there's a general feeling that although it's a very popular area of the site, it's very attractive and there are some really interesting things here. It's quite spread out, so the, the Wagonway here and Pockley are quite a distance from each other. And by adding more into the space and providing more visitor facilities, uh, we're really opening up the area. And the difference that being able to sit and have a bit of food and a drink will make, having a toilet nearby, uh, I think that'll really make this area a much more uh, heavily used part of the site and that's great because it really is a nice part of Beamish.